join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him. Or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey. For the ultimate shot. In this episode of The Ultimate Shot, we are off stalking deer. The red deer is widely distributed in the Northern Hemisphere on three continents, Europe, Asia, and America. To stalk and hunt it is extremely difficult, and it is one of the most exciting deer hunts. Red deer are gregarious animals. In the summer, their herds are smaller, and in the winter, they gather in groups of 20 to 30 animals. During the mating season, the herd disintegrates and is formed again when it ends. The mating season for the red deer in Eastern Europe starts at the end of August and lasts until the beginning of October. And in this episode of The Ultimate Shot, we will hunt these beautiful animals on the Balkan Peninsula in the woods, once inhabited by the first European settlers, the Trakians. In these areas, rich in game, on the territory of today's Bulgaria, the Trakian tribes hunted enormous deer, bears, lions, and many other animal species, some of which have disappeared long ago from the face of the earth. The preserved forests in the Balkan Mountains around the town of Alina, untouched by human hands, have sheltered lots of animal species. Here we find big herds of mufalon, wild boar, red deer, and fallow deer. The natural biotope has also helped the population of many beasts of prey, such as wildcats, jackals, wolves, and many bears. People guard and preserve this natural phenomenon especially from the poachers and illegal hunting activities. At the beginning of the mating season, the male red deer roar in the night and at dawn. And at the peak of the rut, it's day and night. Fierce fighting breaks out among the big bulls, and quite often they end with the death of the defeated. The main enemies of the young are the wolves and foxes, who use the hard conditions of moving in winter and in deep snow to easily overtake their victims. During the mating season, it is no problem for the hunting guides to locate the males, led by their roars. Once the guide determines the direction from which the animal roar came from, he can easily find the red deer in the woods. But then, the hardest and most emotional part of the hunt comes, the stalking. With a constant roaring red deer, the hunter and guide can slink unnoticed some yards from the deer. Not always is the animal you are stalking the trophy you came for. But this is one of the good sides of hunting nothing is for certain. The hunting often starts from the highest point in the mountain where the mating calls of the red deer are easily heard. The successful stalking and the hunter's patience are rewarded with a beautiful trophy and with the memory of being in the magnificent environment of the mountains around Elena. Attracted by the beauty of nature and the good hunting traditions, hunters all over the world gather here and every one of them finds what they came for.
The sun has just lit up the meadow in the woods, and a guide and a hunter have already started following the tracks of a big red deer. The many forest guards who guard the game from poachers had located this enormous specimen some days ago, and now they both listened intensely to the deer's mating calls. From the highest point, they examine the mountains around them for the animal they seek. Due to chance and circumstance, this year the fallow deer's mating season coincides with that of the red deer, and the general love calls of both species echoed all over the surrounding area. The fully grown red deer is about six feet to eight feet long. It is up to six feet tall and it weighs up to 500 pounds. The does are much smaller. The antlers, which crown only the males, fall off every year at the end of February or the beginning of March for the old animals and a month later for the young ones. During the mating period, the red deer's antlers are in their top form for the season. Then of course, it is the best time to harvest the trophy animals. The wide and mighty antlers with well-sharpened ends are an exceptionally deadly weapon which the deer uses against the other males in the herd to win the rights over the females. Scared by the frenzied deer, the mouflon quite often move to the fern fields, which are safer and not so noisy. Sometimes the old red deer males, defeated in fights by younger and more tenacious animals, will follow the mouflon tracks and withdraw from the battlefield to have a rest. The visible scars on the deer's body and its tired step showed clearly that this male was retreating from a fight. The animal's symmetrical crown and its advanced age hinted that this would be an exceptional trophy. The shot, straight in the heart, made the deer jump. The deadly hit caught the lone animal by surprise, and it fell to the earth that very minute. Scared by the shot, the mouflon ran for the cover of the forest. The hunter, extremely happy with his trophy, heads back to the lodge. Later in the day, he will also take some pictures with the enormous animal to commemorate the event. All over the mountain, the animals have grown used to the noise of the engine of the guide's Toyota. This allows us to take some pictures of fallow deer, which are usually so timid. The young deer watched curiously as the Toyota passed by. This machine was tested many times on the rough terrain in the mountains. After a three-hour passage over the mountain roads, the car stopped at the final point that we could reach. Our aim was a big fallow deer. We would try to stalk it walk, which probably would be beyond our capabilities if we didn't try in their mating season. We had gone so deep into the mountains that some of the young deer that had not seen a human before watched curiously the two-legged specimens, massed as branches walking among the woods.
At this place, it seemed that time had stopped at a moment before human civilization started destroying nature. After a two-hour march, we entered a very thin beechwood forest. We heard the coarse roar of the fallow deer everywhere. In the ravine nearby, we even witnessed two fallow deer stalking each other. The fights between males are extremely aggressive, and quite often one of the rivals, or both, die from their severe injuries. Their behavior really is strange as the males often travel for many miles side by side and then suddenly they turn and strike the opponent by surprise, reminding one much of a scene from a Western movie. Our hunting guide, Stefan, examined carefully the hills nearby, looking for the fallow deer males, frenzied by their love games. Soon we reached the crest of the hill, and a beautiful view burst upon us. A young deer with an elegant step hid behind the hill nearby, drawing our attention. But Stefan was on the alert for all of us and warned us on time of the danger. A poisonous snake slid by our feet. Just when we were passing through a big fern-covered field on our way back, the hunter noticed a beautiful mouflon coming straight at us. Obviously, he wouldn't find a worthy fallow deer trophy today. Why not come back with a nice Mufalon trophy instead? And right at the moment when he was preparing to shoot the Mufalon, a big fallow deer appeared in the clearing. This was lucky indeed, so he didn't hesitate for a second. The shot echoed in the mountains and the fallow deer, shot in the heart, jumped and started running. But not more than 40 yards away, it fell to the ground. The long march and the hunter's efforts were fittingly rewarded with an exceptional trophy. The joyous excitement from the successful end of the hunt made him quicken his step to see the fallow deer up close. The animal had fallen on its side in the low dried grass. The trophy was imposing indeed. The male's weapon, which he used in hundreds of battle in his long life, now would take a place of honor among the marksman's trophies. Keeping the hunter's tradition, the guide dipped a green twig in the animal's blood and gave it to the hunter. This was his distinguishing mark which showed his success. The guide put another twig in the dead deer's mouth, paying respect to the spirit of the fallen animal. The hunting adventure in the virgin nature of the Balkan Mountains around the town of Elena continues. We will hunt stalking once again. We will seek a big fallow deer. With loaded guns and a backpack full of nourishment, we took to the road and the rising sun shone on us. We were ready for a long march because even during the mating season, stalking a fallow deer is a hard task. The coarse roar of the animal we sought came as a 
pleasant surprise to us. We couldn't dream of such luck. The male was far from the places where the males usually fought their battles. It was probably an old animal that was defeated, a cast out driven here by the younger males. The animal was old indeed, and its trophy was very beautiful. The straight shot left no doubt. Less than a hundred yards away, it fell to the ground. In this part of the Balkan mountains, around the town of Elena, is one of the few well-preserved resources of Europe where the wildlife populations are restoring to huntable numbers. This was one of the eloquent examples how the money gained from hunting tourism and the right management can restore the environment. In this area, far from civilization and guarded from the poachers' raids, the increase of fallow deer, red deer, wild boars, and even bears has doubled in the last 10 years. The care taken of these animals and their year-round feeding programs produces great results and the opportunities for hunters to harvest record-class trophies are steadily increasing. Here hunters can now often see herds of hundreds of mufalong, fallow deer and red deer. At the end of September, when nature transforms from summer to fall and the stormy clouds hide the warm sun's rays, the deer leave the windswept woods. Hidden in the ghost blanket of the fog that covers the mountain, the red deer are not scared to venture out in the open and roar. The hunter holds his breath. He is thrilled to hear the mating call. An experienced good guide can recognize by the deep guttural roar whether the animal is young and insecure or a big imperious deer. Sometimes, as a result of disease or genetic malformations, weak species of animals grow up in nature's environment. In normal conditions, such animals would fall prey to the carnivorous animals. But due to the lessening number of wolves and jackals, humans have to perform this purging function of wildlife management. This deer was a threat for the power of the next generation. From the wooden stands, built at about 30 feet height above the ground, the hunters can observe the game's movement in the plowed up wildlife management fields around the stand. Hunting from an ambush is not always productive, so the hunter and the guide start walking under the constant rumble of the upcoming storm. Soon a deep guttural roar leads them to the big male. Approaching the roaring deer is easy, because while he roars, he does not hear anything from the world around him. Seeing the animal 
The hunter does not hesitate because any delay at all may result in an unsuccessful hunt. The mountain deer's crown is impressive. The symmetrical antlers and their thickness are a clear evidence of a gold medal. This is a worthy trophy for the hunter and for the ultimate shot. After several rainy days, when the earth is damp and soft, the experienced guides have no trouble to follow the animals for dozens of miles into the forest. Following game is one of the oldest and most exciting hunting traditions. After all the miles passed on this march following the animal's trail, the hunter's efforts were crowned with success.